This question introduces the concept of electric field. It's a little subtle, so we'll have to deal with a little bit of theory first. Before we talk about the electric field though, let's quickly talk about the gravitational field as we have discussed early in the term. And its existence is basically, at the beginning anyway, to explain how is it possible that gravitational forces can act without touching bodies. And that would work if you can imagine that there's a mass in the middle and in order for it to pull on the mass way out here, it's kind of got this invisible background that it's tugging back against, which pulls on this guy. And then we can map the effects of this out by drawing a whole bunch of arrows to say, if I put the mass, say here, it's gonna feel a certain amount of force, but if I put the mass here, it's gonna feel a bigger amount of force and in a different direction. So that's why we call it a field. It's very roughly speaking, it's like a field of arrows. There's a bunch of arrow kind of distributed in space. Each of them will tell you in that particular point in space, how much force would I feel? And we denote this as G, and that's defined to be the amount of force that a certain mass will feel divided by the mass itself. Because then we can just swap in a different mass, that's a little different, M2, and it will be experiencing the same G, but as a result it will get a different F. Because if you swap this around, you know that FG is equal to MG. This effectively being the acceleration due to gravity because of the way this is set up, but here we're talking about the gravitational field. And this has a couple practical implications. First one is it allows us to mentally justify why my big mass here is pulling on my little mass without touching it, because that's just weird. All the other forces, you expect some kind of contact, initially anyways. We now know better, of course. And it also lets us swap this small mass to all kinds of different things. Because once we figure out what the gravitational field is, we can just swap in different masses and we'll get the ma force fairly quickly. And I'll show you that to be exactly the same in electric field as well. Speaking of which, let's talk about the electric field now. Very, very similar situation. Here we have some kind of big charge in the middle and somehow it's pushing this other, say they're both positive, charge away from itself without touching it again. So for the same reason, we kind of imagine there's this invisible background where it's pushing out and then this thing rides along the same push. So again, we can map it out with drawing all kinds of arrows. Uh, in this case, because it's repulsive, all the arrow goes away from itself and mapping out this invisible background, we call this the electric field denoted by E with a vector. The size of the electric field will be related to the electric force, except this time we're not going to be dividing by mass because in gravity, mass is what matters. But in the electrostatic force, it's the charge that matters. So we're going to divide by the test charge. Notice though, this charge is the charge that's feeling the force, not the charge that's providing the field. Little q, not big Q. Unit-wise, there's nothing pretty here. It's Newton's per coulomb, simple, simple. And similar to how we can write this, we can again write that we just multiply Q by whatever the electric field is and then we'll get the force. So we can swap this charge out and put in another charge, say 2q, and then we know that it will feel force twice as big. Or even better, we can put another charge at the same point and have a negative q, then we know it feels the same force, but because negative, vector gets flipped around, so it attracts inwards. Very handy kind of conception. So that's the electric field. For a point charge, we can go a little bit further because we know the expression for the electrostatic force. And that's going to be K big Q 
times little q over the distance square and divide by q. So all you have left is k big Q over r square. And in this case, this is the charge that's causing the field, big Q. So after all that theory, which is quite important for electric field because it's quite it's a pretty subtle idea, but powerful. And we will be dealing with it moving forward. Once you get wrap your head around what it is, the calculation isn't so bad because it's just what we call a normalized force. Take the force, divide by the charge that it's acting on, and then you'll get the local electric field. Uh, for a point charge, it simplifies to that. Back to the question itself. So here we're saying that we have some unknown charge, and at some point later, notice you don't even need another charge there anymore. You can just talk about some random point in space. And to that point in space, you have a distance of 0.250 0 meter. And while we're talking about magnitude, so uh, we don't know if it's positive or negative. We'll assume it's positive. So let's say it points outwards. And then the E over here is 10,000. Like I say, no pretty units, Newtons per Coulomb. Using the um, equation then, we know that the magnitude of E is equal to K magnitude of Q divided by R square. So we can solve for Q. And we're given my electric field, my distance, all divided by the same constant we've been dealing with quite a while now. Bam, 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 bam. This coulomb, the, with that coulomb, so I have one coulomb left. The under under becomes an over. Calculator gets us basically 69 nano coulombs. It's tough to be able to visualize these things, so you do have to just be very careful with your math. It's, it's tough to come up with any sensible sanity check because the numbers, the orders of magnitude are so big. And then part B. So we're flipping it around and so for the same charge but at the further point let's call this point L and they're asking if it's 10 meters away what is my E there so you would think that being further away the E would be substantially smaller but it should still be in the same direction so basically we do the same calculation again but with a different R this time. Q stays the same though because it's the same charge causing the electric field. And that just goes in there. We can round it off to 6.25 Newtons per coulomb. So a little lengthier introduction to electric field because there's some conceptual things we have to kind of get used to first. But in terms of the calculation, we'll see a few more examples of that as well.